and we were able to, if you recall, we said that money is not cash, as many of us have presumed it. We also explained to you that because we do not know what money represents, I can hear a humming sound somewhere. I don't know if you can help me out, guys. It's a bit distracting. Um, we said that if you don't recognize a thing, you would not know strategies on how to get those things. Before now, many of us are so um, um, exposed to the fact that money is paper. That money, that paper you owe, everybody will give you some money and you give that money. It's okay because that's the traditional way that we've been taught. It takes a lot for people to understand that that is not really money. I tried to do a bit of justice to that last week when I used the British pound. How many of you remember that illustration where I used the British pound as an example? If you go on the British pound, you will see there where it is signed by the cashier of the United Kingdom, the head cashier of the United Kingdom, um, that he promises to give the bearer of this note the sum of 50 pounds. That statement in itself signifies that that paper you are holding is not 50 pounds. That he promised that any time the bearer of this paper proceeds to somebody else within the community where that paper has been accepted as a legal tender, when he presents it, everybody in that community is obliged to give that person 50 pounds. So that paper is not 50 pounds. It is what you take from the person that becomes 50 pounds. So what does that mean? It means that money is not the paper. Money is the value that that person is going to give you because you presented that paper to him. So when you understand that, you will know what to pursue. And many of us, we are funny about this thing, that everything about we wake up on Monday morning, we want to look for, oh, where's that green? I've not still seen this new money. How many of you have seen it? Ah, see my people. <laughs> Please, can somebody show me? Um, let me see it. Can you imagine? Wow, it's fine. Can I have this? Hallelujah. See. You see, this is not money. Do you know what money is? Okay. 500. Can I also have this? Can I also have it? He said, yes, okay. Who has the 200 too? Okay, the 200, please. Uh -uh. So that you won't be annoyed that I didn't collect your own. Bring your own 200 too. Are you giving it to me from your heart? <laughs> Praise God. Now, can you imagine? I just raised about 2K. Tomorrow's lunch is settled in the office. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Somebody say, oh, Gen 2K. <laughs> so let's, let's break it down a bit. This is what we called money. You know, as I just stood here, this thing just came to my mind. This is what we all call money. Am I correct? It's not money. Do you know what money is in this exercise that we just did? It's the way they perceived me. You don't get. When you go outside, go and ask anybody for money. Say, how many anybody else? We'll bring it here. Just ask anybody on the streets everywhere or even in church here. So people will even lie that they've not seen any money in their life. Not because they don't have the money, but because you don't look like who they want to give that money. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. So what is money here? Money is all the experiences for the last 20 something years that I've used to lead people. All the experiences that I've used to train people. All the experiences that I've used to become a pastor that you respect and you value. That is why in one word I asked, do you know if I asked everybody here to give me? As long as you have it, will you give me? That is what we call money. Clap so that it can enter your brain very well. We are going somewhere. So, 
The minute you change the concept from this to you and the things you carry, this thing has no business but to gravitate towards you. Am I making any sense here? That's how it will be. It will gravitate towards you. So what should you pay attention to? This or this? This is the real money. The minute this continues to grow, and I'm going to give you the mathematical example. I hope Pastor Gwenga, your team has it there. Expression of value, you begin to understand that, wow, I've been making mistakes all my life. <laughs> if you continue to build your capacity, little wonder scripture says, seek ye first the what? The kingdom of God and what? His righteousness, which is the values of the kingdom. He said, and all these things people run after will run after. Am I making sense here? We begin to run after you. I wish somebody would go home today and say, Lord, open my eyes to know what I carry. Because the minute you know these things and you begin to put emphasis on them, when we tell people, don't be lazy, study, study. People don't get what we are trying to say. Upgrade your thinking. People don't get what we are trying to say. The more you begin to think solutions, helping people, value systems, before you know it, people will begin to gravitate towards you with whatever is in their pulse. Is somebody getting me here today? So, let's quickly run. What then is this noisy value that we talk about? What then is this whole idea about, oh, pastor, you're talking about value. Everywhere you go to, they talk about value, value, value. What is value? Let's break it down today. Let's break it down. So that you, can, you will begin to see how easy it is to be a wealthy person. What is value? Two words I want to jump out from many of the things I've used as description for value. Number one. Value is your usefulness and value is your importance to other people and the system where you operate. Mark those words down. Value is your usefulness and value is your importance to other people within the system where you operate. In other words, if you are not important to your system, if you are not useful to other people, then you are not a man of value. And if you are not a man of value, you have no business being wealthy. That's why you see yourself struggle looking for money. You don't look for money, you look for yourself. When you look for yourself, money will look for you. Some, oh my God, is somebody getting what we are trying to say here? When you get yourself right, Money is, it has been sent to look for people. If you get what I'm saying today, after this month, if you are poor again, let me not see what's in my mind. Calm down, everybody. Let's settle down. I know somewhere along the line, living in the African space or even Nigeria might also put a little bit of pressure. This message sometimes... Um, in spaces where the system works, this message is like this. This is how they make it. Because if systems are working, you, it's, it's a no-brainer, sir. That's why your family left here during the Jackpot experience last year, two years ago. Your friends left here, and all of, yeah, all of a sudden, one year later, they are calling you to say, oh, we just bought our house. They only put these principles in order, and because the system has organized it, that if you can be a man of value, you can, down, you can pay for a house. Just put a 10%, 20% down payment and spread the rest over 30 years. And as long as you continue to deliver value within your community, that money will be coming out to pay for that house for the rest, for the next 30 years. So something tells you, oh, those people are more powerful. They are not as powerful as you. Your system is not helping you. However, you can never live your life to systems. And always say, oh, it's Buaris matter. Is this? Because in the place where you are saying it's Buaris matter, somebody else is being lifted. Am I making sense here? So you just need to change your mentality and say, look, wherever I step my feet upon, whether it's in Ghana, whether it's in Kenya, whether it's in South Africa, whether it's in the UK or Singapore, wherever I am, I will be a man of value. Tell somebody I will be a man of value. 
So let's break down value. Usefulness. What's usefulness? Usefulness is the usable or beneficial part or period of anything. Is the usable and beneficial period or path of anything. Can people come around you and gain anything? Can people come around you and gain anything? Tangible, intangible, or whatever. Can you be that person that says, I want to be able to produce something, sell something, serve something to my community or the individuals around me? You stay in an estate. I've seen in my estate sometimes, there are, there are places where they have big malls and everything, but because the estate is quite big, you find somebody using his gate house within your street to make a small supermarket. And something tells someone, say, ah, what's that? what are they doing there? Only for us to find out that in a street of almost maybe 50 houses or 60 houses, this particular woman is the only person serving. Every time my people go out there to buy, you say, what are you doing there? Say there are too many people that were waiting to be served by that person. Now imagine that woman sells to 50 houses and each house has about four people, four times 50, 200 people, and 200 people buy something worth of 1,000 naira averagely. That's how much? 200 times 1,000? Uh, 1, That's like 20K or 200K? 200K. So that woman sells 200K every week or every day rather and 200K times 30 days. What do, what's that? That's 6 million. So that woman has a, two, a, 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 a turnover of 6 million naira. This, look at how money is calculated. She has a turnover of 6 million naira. And you are there saying there is no money. And you know why this thing even came to my mind? My daughter went there one day and she bought something that I did not like. And I tell them, I told them, please go return it. And when they got there, the woman said, I don't, I don't collect return good. I tell them, madam, we've not opened it. I don't collect return good. So they had to buy another one. Now that attitude, they found out that that woman had the attitude generally. And nobody's waking up to say, let me also change my gate house to another small kiosk so that we can share that six million into three, three. Am I making any sense here? As simple as these things are. Now, the six million is the turnover. An average person makes an, maybe 10%. 10%. An average, and 10% is very, is very um, conservative. Am I correct? It's very conservative. So people can make 20% on those things. Let's even say it's 10%. So that woman sits in her house with her house help that sells at the gate, and they do a turnover of six million naira, and all of a sudden, they do 10%, 600K. As I mean, that is fair. Am I correct? Very fair. That woman does 600K. Has it ever occurred to anybody here? I have a daughter here who does that. The day she told me, that's when I knew that there's money in commodities. Oh, you don't think there's money? That woman is just a small version of Ebano now. Am I making sense? Because the Ebano you see today that is almost everywhere started in Bagada. As a small kiosk. You know this Malam kiosk? On Bagada, close to uh, what they call that uh, uh, Deeper Life Street. That's what you see today. And the guy is a multi-billionaire now. So when you sit down, you think of life from that angle, you just ask yourself, so what am I bringing to the table? If you are not giving out something of value, whether in form of tangibles or intangibles, you have no business being a rich person. The only way else you can make money, apart from being a man of value, is to beg people. Or, if you are not begging, you still carry on. And both cases are useless. You know that already. So today, as you come into this service, every Saturday, every Sunday as I teach here, it's not just about talking. It's about asking God, Lord, what would I do? So I want to get to the point where somebody goes out tomorrow and is so angry that, why am I poor? I have no business being poor. With this kind of teaching, with this kind of leader, with this kind of system, I don't have a business being poor. Even if it's pure water, sell it. Even if it's recharge card, start selling it. One of the things you want to settle first when you start doing business is a sense of, how would I call this now? A sense of esteem. Because money is actually a feeling. 
Am I making sense here? If you don't have the right feeling and the right atmosphere around you, you will not be able to attract the money that you need. It's a feeling. You need to feel wealthy before you become wealthy. Because when you feel wealthy, you think wealthy, and it changes your speech to be a wealthy talk. Am I making sense here? You know why we say these things? People don't understand the connection. Everybody that will make you rich is everybody apart from you. And they are listening to your words. They are listening to your body language. They are listening to your character. They are looking at you. If you don't look like someone that they can help, they will pass you by. Have you not noticed? People don't truly help beggars. People pity beggars. They don't help beggars. All this idea that you come to a church like this, you go to the car park and you see everybody, and you start thinking, who will I beg money today? They pity you. They don't help you. And what I found out in life, man of God, is that people rather give people who have money than give people who don't have. Have you thought about it? Why do people do that? Luke chapter 16. The Bible explains it there with ease. That man says, my boss is about to sack me. So guys, come. What are we owing you? He said, 50 naira. Give me 25. I'll take it back. You keep 20. How much are we owing you? 50. Give me 30. You keep 20. How much are we owing you? 100. Give me 50. I'll tell you. You keep the Bible said he was doing that so that he can buy the future. So that when his boss sacks him, those guys will be owing him favor. You don't understand. Do you know why people prefer to give people who have money? Because they know the day they need, they will help them back. Anybody who helps you because they pity you or they, anybody who gives you because you are a beggar. He's not giving you because he loves you or anything. He's giving you because he pities you. And anybody you pity, you don't give more than 500 naira, 200 naira. In fact, because you don't, you don't, you consider it as if it's a privilege for you to do that. That's why you don't consider giving 10,000 or 5,000. Because you'll be like, ah, beggars. Have you ever stopped on those, uh, what they call that, those places, traffic lights? And those guys now come with their legs like this. I just go into your distance. I just bring out a bunch of 1,000 like this and say, take. Even your spirit will tell you, oh, real way. something is wrong with you. Look for coins there and give. You've done so well. Do you know if he stands here and many people pass, 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 they will be able to, you will get so much. Remember the experience of David Doe two years ago? He, was just, he said he was just thinking of joking. He was just joking. Can you people give me money so that I can clear my car? How much did he raise again? About 600,000, 250 million. He called it 600,000 pounds or dollars. The guy doesn't need it. But people were driving over him to give him. Why? Everybody that gave him was not unknown people. Though. In fact, they were his friends, big boys on social media. Why? The guy don't achieve. If we did trouble, we go ask him. Am I making sense here? So one of the first mentality you must carry is that your feelings must change. You must learn to act like a wealthy person. Think like a wealthy person and speak like a wealthy person. No wonder many years ago, how many of you watched Bassi and Company? No, we are so small that we didn't understand what those guys were saying. How many of you remember the, the, the words that they used there? If you want to be what? If you want to be a millionaire, think like a millionaire. But that guy never became a millionaire. He was just thinking. <laughs> ah, Gen Z is too much in this church, God. They didn't even know where I was coming from. Praise God. So, change your mentality. Change your inner values. Change your thinking and become that man. Look, how many of you... From the little I've said now, eh, how many of you know that it's impossible for a human being to be poor? How many of you just understood what I said? No, some people are still struggling. How many of you understood what I said, that it's impossible for a human being to be poor? Can I see your hands? That is the way life was designed. You cannot be poor. 
Because you are a human being. You have hands, you have legs, you have thinking faculty. Even people who don't have hands and legs. What's that guy's name that did his birthday last year? Rick. He did his 40th birthday, right? No limbs. No hand, no legs. And that guy is a multi-billionaire. Why? Yeah, he's walking. What about Cobams? No eyes. But yeah, he's walking. If there's any challenge I want to ask for you today, go home. Challenge yourself that I cannot be small this year. I'm created for greater exploits. How many of you believe that? Then I talked about importance. What is your importance? Importance simply means the consciousness of having a high position amongst people. So what am I trying to say? Work on yourself to the point where you are respected among people you are giving a high position in their mind. When people see you, they feel like you are important. You have a high position. Stop. Now, you understand. <laughs> I don't know how to explain, but I'll be, I'll be making it as simple as I can. Now, you would understand why you have no business in this world, except in your bedroom or in your house, to dress anyhow. When we tell people, please, take care of your clothes. There will be something about you that you want to sell to people. Stop this idea of looking too unnecessarily casual. You tell me, I'll get there. Some of you will say, oh, you don't see them Bill Gates. You don't see Mark Zuckerberg. It's only one shirt. They got there. <laughs> Dress well. Because every money you need is in our own hand. And we work with you by perception. If you truly don't have money and you behave anyhow, we will not. Today we all know that Bill Gates is wealthy. We know Mark is wealthy. We know so even if they wear pants, some of us will even wear the pants and follow them. Am I making sense? Michael Jackson's trouser is the worst trouser in this world. How can somebody wear trousers and his eye like this? But it became a style that everybody wants to dress like Michael Jackson. Praise God. So you must understand that you must be a man. Like for example, a woman is a very important personality in a family. A woman, the parents, the children, the husband, the house help, everybody values the woman because she's multitasking. She's a very high resource person within that system. My question to you today, how important are you within the system where you operate? How important are you? How do people perceive your position around them? And let me tell you, people see you before they hear you. You need to take beautiful attention to the way people perceive you. Not every one of us are spiritual. In fact, none of us is that spiritual to know your spiritual content at first glance. Help our destiny by looking good so that we can even give you the privilege of listening to you. Am I making sense? Many guys will come and say, Pastor, all these ladies, they don't mind them. They don't, they don't mind them. Oh, there's money, money they are looking. Money, money, money what? If your sister is not looking for money, won't you slap her face? My brother, be very... I finished the joke, you are still laughing. Sense. <laughs> Praise God. So let me quickly round up by just introducing maybe one or two of... This is a formula I have. Pastor Gwinga, do you have it up there? I, did, I developed something very simple. I call it the value measurement. The value measurement, like an arithmetical um, value measurement. I call it V, which is for value, is equal to ATQ plus APQ. ATQ plus APQ, where ATQ starts for attitude quotient, and APQ starts for aptitude quotient. I will start quickly by talking about the ATQ, which is Aptitude quotient. Aptitude quotient. Attitude quotient, rather. Attitude quotient is another word for character. Attitude quotient. Many of us don't know that character is a very strong value system that people develop. <laughs> the minute you develop character, and I can tell you from a global point of view and also from an individual point of view, why do we value developed countries? Because developed countries have agreed to live by values. 
that promotes the healthy living of people around them. So today you leave your country and you're running to the UK. You leave your country, you're running to the US. What do you think is the magnetic force? Is values though? Am I making sense here? That is what is making you want to go to those places. And it's in their character. Some of us play so low on our character. Now we explain it to you. What this, what's the meaning of attitude quotient? I wrote it as, don't you have it again? He said, this is your ability and degree at which you help make other people feel comfortable around you. How comfortable are people around you? How comfortable are people who stand around you? How reliable are you as a person? Listen, my friend. One of the secrets that many of us must know is that the more you develop value, the more people become connected with you. Why? Because human beings, by default, are actually the carriers of the money that you are looking for. Human beings are the carriers of the money. If they see values in you, they'll be connected with you. And always remember this, that those comforts that they have around you, those reliability that they have around you, increases their trust capital with you. And when they trust you, they are able to exchange that cash, that cash that you, you are looking for, with that value that you have developed over time. I'll go back to this money that they gave me here again. It's over time that they thought about it. They sit under me and they just feel, let's give it to him. He's not lying. He, does, he needs the money or something like that. Develop your character. Develop your character. The other one is developing your competence. But today I'll focus on character. When you have character, it develops capacity for you to have trust. And when people trust you, they will give you their money. I've always told people when I train them that there is no money problem anywhere. No money problem anywhere. Take it from me. No money problem anywhere. The problem we have is trust problem. We don't trust you enough to give you our money. I was teaching them when I went to Lagos the last time. I said, why do banks collect your money? Why do banks collect your money? And have you noticed that you are the one that wakes up in the morning and carry your excess money to the bank? Why do banks collect your money? Because you trust them. Am I making sense here? They have the character of trust. They have the character of being reliable. In your mind, you just say, and you know, the banking system is a good example of what we are talking about here. Today, after service, some of you will be giving money, some of you will sell things at the car park, some of you will make money, some people will make transfer to you. By Monday tomorrow, when you've bought everything, you've given your children the money that they need, you've given your wife the money for food, the remaining 1,000, 5,000, 500,000, where do you take it to? Why didn't you put it in your house? You don't even trust yourself. Because somebody's going to call you. And there's a way money calls people. Am I correct? All of a sudden, how many of you notice that when they pay you salary, that's when you get the highest number of calls? If our village people remember you that time. Uncle, we just said we should say hello. Is this only hello? He said, it's only hello. But mama is not feeling fine. <laughs> Praise God. So trust is a big issue. Listen, there is nowhere trust can fail you. And how do you build trust? One thing, trust is built with time. You don't trust anybody you don't know. Trust comes with time. So everything you are doing every day within the space where you are planted, you are actually building trust capital. When we tell you come for beating, and you always come late, you are actually reducing your trust capital. Am I making sense here? When we tell you deliver something by this time, and you don't deliver it by that time, you are actually reducing your trust capital. Am I communicating here? When we tell you go and buy something, and you refuse to return change, only for us to find out later that you got it cheaper, you have, you have reduced your trust capital. Am I making any sense somebody here today. As simple as these things are, they are the things that have made you lost a lot that you don't still know about. Because sometimes you are the last person to know about your problem. 
Every other person discuss it. They talk to themselves about it. And because they talk to themselves about it, they neglect you in that discussion. So you don't even have the opportunity to defend yourself if you have to defend yourself. So you must understand this, my friends. Develop your values. Be deliberate about it. The money you need is in somebody else's hand right now. It's not everybody in your community that is poor. Whether your family community, your village community, your church community, most people are even rich. At least richer than what you think in your heart. The way life was designed is that people always portray when they are really wealthy less of what they are really worth. There are people in this congregation right now who are worth crazy millions and billions. You will never know. In fact, the more you are wealthy, the more you pretend that you are not. Because that's how people will start thronging you, thronging you everywhere. So the money you need is existing in somebody's essence and right now. And that person is just looking for somebody that he will transfer that money to. But he will never transfer it until he sees trust in your life. For example, you want to borrow money from somebody and there's a story that goes around that anytime they borrow you money, you don't return it. Do you think anybody will give you money again? Nobody will give you that money. So you must learn this. So let me quickly round up by just talking about one out of the six. One out of the six attitude quotient. Number one is contentment. Learn to be contented. It's a quality that attracts wealth and investment. Don't be a frivolous spender. Don't let people see you as someone that they cannot entrust their money with. Contentment does not mean containment. Some of us are contained, whereas we are talking about being content, not being contained. There are people who don't understand the meaning of contentment and they make it look as if I can't do anything. Their life is so... I understand some people, their temperament does not have any drive in them. That's why you surround yourself with people who have drive. And when they are driving you, please follow them. Let them drive you. If you are a lazy man, lazy man in inverted commas, make sure you don't marry a lazy woman. Make sure. Because your home, your home ah. will be a dead house. In fact, in life, God has designed it that your shortcoming will be somebody else's strength. When you are looking for a spouse, partner, business, whatever, always look for people who have your strength so that they can complement it. So contentment, somebody say contentment. Contentment is the acknowledgement and satisfaction of reaching capacity. So you can never be content if you don't know your capacity. And you can only know your capacity by talking to God and asking God, what would you have me do? define your capacity if you don't have a capacity that you are driving towards you will not be content you will only be contained you will be relaxed but you must have a dream what do I want to achieve this year when we are writing our goal what is your goal for your income or your turnover this year 1 billion it's okay but on what basis did you set that 1 billion it must be part of your vision Maybe God told you, or maybe your past experience told you, oh, I made 500 billion last year. I want to make 1 billion. Now, recognizing that 1 billion as what you want to drive at is what is called contentment. For somebody else, it's, oh, it might be 10 billion. If yours is 1 billion and you pursue 10 billion, you will mess up your character along the line. So what am I trying to say? From day one, define your goal. Define what you want. I want to start paying at least five people's salary this year. I only paid one person. So what are the things that you're going to do? Begin to organize yourself towards doing those things. Praise God. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, if you read from 6, the Bible says, godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. Your expectation should be tied to your capacity per time so that you don't end up being greedy. And lose out on a long journey of all the relationships that you're supposed to build. There are people, I don't know how people do it, but I know it happens a lot. I'm praying that one day we will grow to the point where 
We can do business with people and our words will be our bond. Has anybody done that kind of business before? Where your words with somebody was your bond. You see, they advise people in business schools that listen, listen very carefully. Don't call anybody your brother or your friend. When you are starting business, put everything on paper because it is when money starts showing that you know people's real character. Am I making sense here today? But I can tell you in societies where they have trained themselves where their words are their bonds, that's why those societies are very rich. Why? Because the velocity of money increases with speed in those societies because trust is there. When people trust you, uh, in, in, in one book, The Speed of Trust, I don't know if anybody has read that book, The Speed of Trust by, is it Stephen Covey's son or something? He said, IBM and one big company, a Chinese company, did a, a deal of almost one billion or two billion dollars and they did not sign a paper until after six months. At that level, they did not sign any contract until after six months. What would have propelled that kind of trust capacity? Yeah, we want to buy land. 350,000 naira. <laughs> you will call your father. You call your mother. If I had the father that died, you just tell him, come. They need you for one minute before you die again. Let's sign. We don't know that those things actually reduce the speed of money within a society. I want you to wake up this day and make a commitment in your mind that Lord, I want to be content. I want to have godliness in the area of my finances. I want to be able to stand and when I say a thing, people trust me for that thing. Because the day they will discuss your matter, you will not be there. I will betide you that nobody around that conference table will speak good about you. Many contracts that they've not called you. I mean, some of you have gone to meetings. When you got into the meeting, the way you spoke to that person and you defended your project, the man said, look, look, call me tomorrow. This thing is a done deal. This thing is a done deal. And you left that office feeling very convinced that that money is coming. Am I correct? But this is almost two years later. They've not called you. What happened? In your paper, the guy saw a number there. Funny enough, he knows the person that you put as reference and called the person and the person could not say straight that that person is good. So, well, um, really, I don't know. I, I know him. I know him. He's a member of my church, but I don't know him to this extent. The minute that kind of statement happens, what happens to the other person? He slows down. That's why some of us have not, there's nothing like devil chasing you. Your character has been chasing you all the while. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will help our character, especially with regards to finances. Lift up your right hand and begin to pray. Pray for yourself today and say, Lord, help me with my attitude as a person of value. Help me with my attitude. I wish we can go further, but we can't go further than this today. I want someone to pray from the depths of his heart and say, Lord, help me to be a man of value. A man that has the right attitude that attracts money. Trust capital. I wish someone will understand the revelation behind this discussion today. That yes, sometimes you lie uncontrollably. Sometimes you lie out of fear. But you want to say today in the name of Jesus, Oh Lord, help me to stand by my words. Help me to be a man of value. Help me to be a trustworthy man. Help me to be a man that people can rely on. Help me to be that man that when my name is mentioned, when I'm not there, it will be positive statements all the way. I want someone to pray from the depths of his heart. Pray. Pray, my brother. Pray, my brother. Someone pray here today. Someone pray here today. Ask God for help. Ask God for help. I want you to lift up your right hand and prophesy into this week. Ask that your angels will go ahead of you and make crooked paths straight for you. There are many of you who started business deals last week, but they delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed till Friday. 
but you want to pray today and say Lord in the name of Jesus as I appear in Monday as I appear tomorrow rather everybody that is supposed to respond to me in the name of Jesus they will respond to me in the name of Jesus can you pray that prayer from the depth of your heart every delay that you experienced last week every delay that you experienced Pray, 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 pray that every delay, every delay, someone told you that don't worry on Tuesday we will sign the contract, we will make a transfer. This Wednesday, this Thursday, this Friday, we are already on in Sunday. We are going to pray today in the name of Jesus. Whatever is delaying that atmosphere, I wish somebody can pray today and say the name of Jesus. I release it now. I release it now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, help your people to understand 